started out, I'm guessing it might have been about 50 feet from here, but... Well, I was born February 4th, 1933. I was actually born in St. John's. Were you born in a hospital or? No, or a, a, at home? a friend of my mother's and uh, my father. Back then, the old house wasn't quite so warm as it should be in one of the times. So she went to St. John for me to have me. My father stayed here and kept the farm going, up the walls to it, and kept the house from freezing down. And, and uh, I forgot. I don't know if my mother ever said how long she was over there, but I would assume a week or two. So how, what was it like growing up with eight? With what? With eight, eight kids in the, at the table. It was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to fight for food. <laughs> no, we didn't have uh, champagne caviar every meal. We had enough to eat. And it wasn't processed, you know, the way everything is nowadays. Most of it was raised in the garden, and we had our own homegrown beef, and they bought some stuff in the stores, of course. But we had a lot more homegrown stuff back then to do that. Did you have pigs and chickens too for? Yeah, yeah, they did. For food and eggs? And yeah. <clears throat> um, I see one of the questions here is about refrigeration. Uh, were they still cutting ice out of the yeah, river when I, you were yeah, kid? I can remember the cutting ice and putting it down in the old ice house back to what used to be the milk house. And uh, Dad would have somebody bring some sawdust and we'd, they'd put sawdust over it. And every night when we got done milking, you'd take his ice tongs and go down into his house and get a block of ice or a half block of ice and put it in the old cooler. Yeah. Is that how you kept the milk cool too? The what? The milk that after you milked yeah. the... Yeah, that's why what the cooler was for, you know. Uh, before we got a refrigerator, we used to take, uh, we usually have an empty milk can we take meat or suck down, put it in a milk can and put it in the pool. So how long would this ice last for if you it? Went, it well, I don't remember winter. how long it lasted, but he put he put ice in it every night. My mother was all, can't remember whether it was all gone when he put the night ice in the next day, but it kept the water cool enough so that it, the milk kept. Well, I was thinking of seasonally. I mean, if you cut ice in, say, yeah, February, yeah. we did it last until the next. Could yeah, you keep it cold yeah, enough in the ice yeah, house? It, I remember using it in the hot weather. That's why you put the sawdust over it. Right. And the next spring, uh, Raymond uh, built his stable. He hired Matt Carr over at St. John's where he built it. And Jerry Evans come up every summer and helped him. Then he got out of high school, and, and when he got out of high school, he went into service. And so I helped work for him when I think it was two summers, or three summers. And uh, I helped Joe, and then when Raymond started haying, I went up and helped Raymond hay, and then I went back to work for Joe uh, and worked for him until Dad was taken sick, and then I came home and took the farm home. So how many milkers did Raymond lose in that? I don't remember. I don't think he, I think he might have lost three or four, something like that. But he didn't lose a lot of them. He lost some. Uh, <clears throat> I was trying to think. Dad had the same thing happen to him, but uh, his the, the whole floor didn't go down all the way. It went down so that two or three of the curtains was hanging by the neck, but they could still breathe. 
So he went when he went down to start Troy to see what happened. He just he had the old fashioned stanchions on that side where it happened, where you'd have two two big sixes, one would bolt through the bottom and one through the top, and two two big sixes on top to have them go back and forth in. And the other one you'd have a bolt through the bottom. You'd have a piece up on top that you would flop down when you got it closed. All you had to do was flop them pieces up and the things opened up and the kill just dropped right down into the north. It was down in the basement. It didn't work out that way for Raymond. No, it didn't work out uh, that way for Raymond. They, they, uh, the whole floor went all the way down. They hung and uh, got destroyed. Now, when you mentioned Gilbert being road commissioner, of course, Dad worked for him, but were they on the Whittemore place at that time? Yeah. You know, Gilbert lived there for quite a few years. And then they were still, he was still road commissioner when they moved up where Russell lived. Because I remember your, your father telling about he and Frankie Morrow working up there. I don't know just what year it was. Geneva has mentioned uh, when they lived there, walking up to her folks at Glen and yeah. for like Thanksgiving dinner. But I take it the old, the previous Shadow Lake Road wasn't a, a used road then. It was a road, but do you remember what the history of that was? No. All they, probably what they did was just walk down to where uh, Johnny Fitchett lived. Walk the old road down and it comes right out by, by where Geneva lives now. No, this is down on 18 where Shadow Lake yeah. goes up. Yeah, I can just, I can remember when when they fixed that road over. But it wasn't until they built the dam. It was upper dam. Before they built the dam, yeah. 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 I remember they were, uh, Helen and Irene was, went up to Glen Neva. 4-H uh, meeting, and we went up that way, and I went up with them. We had to go through two fences, well, one of the fences. <laughs> I caught my britches <laughs> and tore. <them. laughs> we got up there to Eva's, and Helen borrowed a needle and some thread and patched my pants up. <laughs> yeah, the pearls built that, done that road job. I don't know how long it had been way late. You didn't know how long it had been since it had been used. Originally, the road went up through there. Right, but it just wasn't because yeah. you, you went through up a lot of it and then back by Shadow Lake up Grist, what's now Grist yeah. Pit Road. But. Yeah, that's, that's what I was about the time. Uh, he's told me about it two or three times now. Alan Cushion. George, I think. That was when Will still owned the upper place. And they was up there doing something. And they come down and had motorcycles. Uh, Alan and George were, boy, they were sons of Will. Okay. Lillian. They, <laughs> they come down and they're the grands. And so they were going to have a race. One of them was going out by Grant Young's and down in Norfolk to where Will and Will they lived. The other one was going down by where Kimball's lived and down the old road there and up to his folks and see. <laughs> Got there first. One of them ended up the next. And I don't know which one it was. But you asked the world that big study. One of them never got there. Right? Well, he got there eventually, but it took a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I can remember when uh, Joan Hattie Crapo lived down there where Kimball's lived. They lived there before Lyman and Willow. And they were grandparents to Sandy's husband. Oh, Bob. Bob, Bob okay. Crapo. Ah, I didn't know that. Now, 
the Jocelyn name is associated with that place at some point, isn't it? No. Jocelyn's is up above. You are, you go up. You know where the town line is between oh, the water. That old place, yeah. Yeah. yeah up there where yeah, we used to picnic up there when we were kids. Ellen and uh, Merton. Merton built the house. Except the the house is up on the top of the hill. Yeah, I remember that house. It was, yeah, it was unoccupied. Good. There was a good view up there. See way over in New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah you too. You guys could go on all night. Sure. <laughs> but at some point we have to kind of wrap this up. Well, <laughs> so is this a good time to wrap it up? Or? <laughs> it is as far as I can. Okay,